Hey there developers, it's Brandon here from Blankly and I'm super excited today to walk you through a tutorial on how to build an RSI bot in 30 lines of code. Here at Blankly, we've been able to build out a full pipeline that enables you to take any trading idea and put it into productions in just a few lines of code minutes instead of months. And so we're super excited. I'm super excited. Let's build an RSI bot together using the Blankly package. Let's get into it. First, let's open up the terminal and install Blankly. We'll simply run pip install Blankly, and that will install the Blankly package locally on our computer. Blankly comes in with a CLI that enables us to easily also create our project environment. So in this RSI bot tutorial folder, I'm going to simply run Blankly init. And Blankly init pops up and creates this entire folder with four specific files that we'll look at in a little bit. Let's hop over to VS Code and actually look at what this looks like. As you can see, the CLI has created four different JSON files and a suite of other specific files. So like our bot.py and our requirements.txt. This allows you to get up and running to Blankly really, really quickly. Today, we're gonna to look at keys.json and settings.json because those are important for us when we build our RSI underscore bot. So in this case, let's take a look at our keys.json. Now taking a look at this keys.json, you can easily see here that we can plug in our keys for Coinbase Pro, Binance, Alpaca, and Alwanda. Today, we're gonna to be using Alpaca specifically to actually do things like trading, find data for Microsoft and NVIDIA, and ultimately run back tests. And so we're gonna plug in our API keys in Alpaca if you haven't done that, check the link here already to set up your Alpaca account. And from there, we're ready to go. Let's take a look at the settings.json real quick. So I'm gonna save this file, go to settings.json. Here in the settings.json, you have all of these different configurations that ensure that your back tests and any other configurations that you wanna make are done here for you. You can take a look at our docs here as well to help you overall figure out how to set this up, but this is also what comes in default with the initialization, which we have optimized for you. All right, let's get started with building our bot. To start out with building our bot, it's very simple. Let's create rsibot.py. And from there, we're gonna start importing the specific things that we need for our package. Awesome, now that we have our RSI bot, how do we actually go about implementing it? Well, let's think about it from a large perspective. First, we need to be able to connect with our exchange to make trades. Second, we actually have to implement our logic for calculating RSI. And third, we have to make a decision on how we actually wanna make those trades based on the RSI bot. Now, in the past, we would have to import multiple different places to actually do this. Luckily, we can do this all with Blankly. So from Blankly, we're gonna import Alpaca, our exchange, a strategy, and strategy state. We're also, from the indicators, going to import RSI. Great. Now we have all of this. Now let's get started in actually building out our strategy. Now to get started, I've already plugged in two specific functions as you can see here, init and price event. You'll see later on why these are potentially useful. But first, let's take care of the first step of initializing our exchange. As you said, we are using Alpaca. So we're gonna initialize Alpaca just like that. This will naturally authenticate with Alpaca itself using our keys.json. And now we have to plug this into our strategy. So we're gonna create a strategy object, which will handle our logic, and we're gonna pass in our exchange. Easy, just done, just like that. Now, what is init and what is price event? As you can see, this is how our strategy is actually able to determine the trading logic. All I have to do is do s.addPriceEvent, and this will now run a function every single time a new price comes in, a new bar comes in, or any additional data. So you can see here that it takes a callback, so I'm gonna plug in price event, takes in a symbol, so Microsoft. Resolution, I'm gonna run on one hour. And my init function, this is what's gonna run at the very, very beginning. So I'm gonna run init equals init. And bam, that's all we need to start a price event that allows us to calculate our logic and actually determine what to do as data comes in. It handles all of the data connections, getting data from Alpaca, getting data in the past and in real time. And now let's see how we actually use that data to make decisions. The first thing that we want to look at here is init. Init allows us to run a function when the price event starts. So whenever a strategy first initializes, when you first run it, python uh, rsi bot.py, that is what is run. This will initialize the state and the symbol Microsoft. As you can see here, it takes two specific parameters, symbol and state. Strategy state is our way of actually storing data and any other additional information that we want specific to a symbol. 
So you can see here we have Microsoft. And if we want to get the data for Microsoft, for example, so we can calculate RSI over time, we're going to store this in our state. So I'm going to run state. I'm going to create a variable it's called history. And I'm going to store Microsoft's tickers for the past 150 bars. So I'm going to be run state.interface. This access is Alpaca internally, gets the history. I'm going to pass in the symbol. I'm going to pass in uh, 150 bars. And I'm going to pass in the resolution. I'm going to use state.resolution. And I'm going to return this finally as a deck and only get the close output. Now, that is a lot. I know. What is going on here? And why are we using symbol state.resolution? Why are we using a deck? Well, let me explain. The reason why we're doing this is because we want to make these functions reusable. Let's say I added an additional price event down here. If I wanted to trade on Apple, for example, rather than having to rewrite our init in our price event, we can make our code reusable so that we can run multiple price events or change our price event almost immediately. In this case, we're only going to run on Microsoft and that's okay, but you can see the power in this. By using symbol and resolution, we can easily change the resolution here to one day, to one hour, change this to NVIDIA, or whatever we want, and this init function will still work. Now, why are we using a deck? A deck allows us to make sure that we are only storing 150 data points. This allows us to save memory and makes our code run faster. Finally, we only access the close because we are not interested in open, high, low, or the volume that we need today. So we're going to store variables history, and we'll add one final component here on our init, is, and that is to whether or not we have a position. So whether or not we actually own a position right now, we're going to set that to false. Because in order for us to actually make a decision on whether or not to sell, we also have to have a position that we've bought. Great. That is our init function. Now we're ready to look at our price event. Awesome, so now that we have our data from initialization and grabbing the historical data, now we have to take a look at the price event. Now this price event runs every single time a new bar comes in. For example, in this case, it runs every single time a new one hour hits for Microsoft. You can see here that we take in a price, the recent bar, a symbol, so Microsoft, and a state. That's how we access all the data that we have from init. Now, before we calculate RSI, we wanna update our state. We want to make sure our history is up to date with the most recent price. So we're going to append this to the price right that. And now our history is constantly updated. Now remember that deck? This makes sure our history is only 150 bars long. And so any data that was earlier, so the earliest data point is now kicked out for our latest one. Beautiful. Now let's calculate RSI. To calculate RSI, all I have to do is pass in this data into the RSI function. So I'm going to pass in the history and bam, I have my RSI. Awesome. So how do we actually make the decision of whether or not we want to buy or sell? Well, RSI tells us when a stock is overbought or oversold. When it's overbought, we want to sell. And when it's oversold, we want to buy. Now, when it's oversold, RSI is typically super low. Less than 30 is a good signal of oversold. And when it's super high is when it's overbought. Above 70 is a great indicator of it being overbought. And so we're going to use 30 and 70 as our ways of determining whether or not we want to buy or sell. So we want to buy if RSI, the last element, right, because this returns an indicator or an array, we want to take the last element, the final one, the RSI on the specific price, and see if it's less than 30. If it's less than 30 and, well, we don't have a position already created, then we want to actually buy the specific stock. How do we actually do that? Well, we have to figure out our cash position. How do we know how much cash we have to actually purchase? Well, luckily we have state.interface.cash. We can easily divide that by the price and get our quantity. I'm gonna cast this to an int and get our quantity. And then I'm gonna submit a market order. So interface, state.interface.market order. I'm gonna pass in my symbol. I'm gonna pass in my psi, which is a buy. I'm gonna pass in my quantity. Awesome, I've just made a market order. And the final thing I want to do is update my variable own position and set that equal to true. And bam, I now have a working buying event. Now I buy when it's less than 30 and make sure everything is handled properly. Now, how do we actually choose to sell? Again, that is looking at when the RSI is greater than 70 or when it's overbought. And so we're going to check if we have a position and if the RSI output is greater than 70. So again, else if, my RSI output of the last element is greater than 70 and the variable 
own position is set to true, then I'm actually wanting to sell my position. Now, how do I know the quantity that I have now? All I have to do is run state.interface.account, pass in my symbol, and figure out how much I have available. I'm gonna cast that to an int, and that is my quantity. And from there, I'm gonna make a market order, pass in the symbol, say I'm gonna sell it, and pass in the quantity. And then finally, update my variable here, own position equals false. And with that, I now have a fully working price event that will take a look at the RSI and buy when it's less than 30 and sell when it's greater than 70. Now, how do we backtest this? Typically speaking, that means we have to get historical data, we have to uh, determine whether our logic has actually made a trade, You know, make a for loop that actually goes through the historical data and, and runs our price event and calculates all of our metrics. That's a lot of work and we have to integrate so many different libraries to do that. Luckily, Blinkly does this in one line. All I have to do is run s.backtest, plug in how, many, how long I want my backtest to be, so in this case, one year, and tell it how much I want to start out with. So in this case, I'm going to start out with $10,000 of USD. And bam, that's all I need to do to run a backtest and test my model over time. From there, this outputs actually results. This outputs metrics that we can use, so compounding a growth rate, things like sharp ratio, and much, much more that we'll see later. And finally, I'm just going to print that to the terminal, and bam, we now have a working Python file that we can actually run in the terminal and see the output of it. We'll take a look at the terminal results and also a beautiful graph that showcases what trades were made. So now that we have all of our code written, I'm gonna run python rsibot.py and see what the backtest actually outputs. You can see now that it's grabbing the data, running the backtest for us real quick, and bam, it's gonna spit us out some metrics and some data. You can see all the resampled account values, the account history, and whether or not we actually made a return. You can see that we made 7% on a return and had a max run out of 10% and some other specific metrics like Sortino, Sharp Ratio, and Kalmar Ratio. Now what's really cool is our backtest graph. Let's take a look at that. Now, as you can see, our backtesting engine actually outputted us a graph of every single trade that we made. So you can see here the trades that we made for USD, the trades that we made for Microsoft, and ultimately our account value over time. We started out with 10,000 and well, we ended up with $10,700. So a meager 7% return. But that shows us now the power of actually building out a fully fledged Python bot in just a few lines of code. As you can see in 25 lines of code, we have a fully working RSI bot that we're actually able to take live. All I have to do is do s.start, and bam, you have a live coding trading bot. That's the power of Blinkly. We're able to easily build and deploy trading bots at scale in minutes instead of months. In 25 lines, you were able to build an RSI bot. Imagine if you built a machine learning algorithm or a golden cross or something else. Let your mind run wild. If you like this video, like and subscribe, join our Discord, and check out our docs for even more information. We're always constantly building, constantly improving the package and building out so much more. So we'd love to hear your feedback and can't wait to see what you do. Thanks again, signing off right now. See you.